I think if you look at what's happened with oil prices, you look at the kind of lack of fiscal discipline going on in India right now, and then you have elections next year, where actually the picture is a lot more murky than it was even six months ago. So I think actually for Modi to win again is not such a straightforward uh, bet as, as it was even just six, nine months ago. But alongside that, you have a lot of issues going on. I mean, corporate earnings have not come through in the way that you expected. And I think actually the macro picture is very weak right now in India. So expect that currency to continue to be weak. Now, in terms of ripple effect, I would not be too, too worried about that. I think in a way, India has let that currency slide. They're less concerned than, for example, Indonesia, where the currency has been far more up the agenda for, for, for the central bank. And, and India still has a you know, whole lot of forex, uh, foreign exchange reserves, so at a record uh, level recently. So I think they actually can protect it if they want to. But right now, they seem to be reasonably comfortable letting it get to where it is. But I'm not so concerned about the rest of Asia from the impact of, of India. We have seen an immense slide in the prices of Chinese equities, primarily domestic Chinese shares on the Shanghai and Shen in, Shenzhen indexes set. Are you picking them up? Do you view them as bargains mm. or are they still to be avoided? Well, I think one has to be very careful in the domestic market because the volatility is higher. Some of the quality of the company is not so great. However, within that, there are some real gems. And we do own A shares as, as we stand today. They have come through with great surprises on dividends. Their balance sheets are very strong, margins very sticky, some great, you know, genuine Chinese growth business models. However, I would say that this kind of trade issue will go on for longer than we think. And, and so there will be an impact on the domestic market more so because the retail element is, is very important there. And what you've seen is mainlanders taking a lot of money out of the uh, domestic market, out of Hong Kong, and that will probably continue. However, that does create some great opportunities for some genuine business models in, in, in China because the end game is not really about trade. It's about intellectual property theft. It's about... Um, this made in China 2025, it's, um, you know, it's, it's about those kind of things. And trade is really a, a side issue. So if China does cut tariffs by 5%, 10%, that's not really the end game. What the US is gunning for is something much larger than that. And I don't think they will stop anytime soon.